Hello, everybody. I'd like to give an introduction to group homomorphisms. So we're starting a new chapter. This is chapter 10 in our book. Um, yeah, so we're looking at group homomorphisms. These are generalizations of isomorphisms. You know, isomorphisms are homomorphisms that are bijective. So the groups have to be the same size, and the map between the two groups has to be a bijection. By contrast, for homomorphisms, you can have homomorphisms between groups of, of different sizes, or you could even have homomorphisms between two groups of the same size where the function's not bijective, so it's not an isomorphism. Okay, so a homomorphism between two groups, G and G bar, is a function phi from G to G bar that satisfies this group structure preservation property that we've talked about already for isomorphisms. For any inputs A and B, phi of A combined with B has to be equal to phi of A combined with phi of B. Remember, A and B are elements in our first group, G. So here, A and B are being multiplied using the operation in G. By contrast, phi of A and phi of B are elements in our second group, G bar. And so phi of A and phi of B here are combined using the group operation in our second group, G bar. Okay, this looks really similar to isomorphisms. What's the difference? Well, isomorphisms are homomorphisms that also happen to be bijective. So in an isomorphism, this map phi has to be a bijection. Every element in G corresponds one-to-one, -one, you know, to, to, to an element in G bar. So in an isomorphism, G and G bar need to have the same size. In a homomorphism, they don't need to. Think of homomorphisms like rectangles and isomorphisms like squares. Every square is a rectangle, but not every rectangle is a square. Same thing. Every isomorphism is a homomorphism, but not every homomorphism is an isomorphism. Another piece of vocabulary that's important is the kernel of a homomorphism. The kernel of a homomorphism, phi, from g to g bar, is, well, the kernel of phi is the set of all elements in g that get mapped under phi to the identity of g bar. Kernels weren't so interesting for isomorphisms because the kernel of an isomorphism was just the identity of G. We saw that isomorphisms map the identity of G to the identity of G bar, and furthermore, isomorphisms are injective, so no two elements get mapped to the same spot. So only the identity of G can get mapped to the identity of G bar, nothing else. By contrast, in homomorphisms, many things can get mapped to the identity of G bar. Um, we'll later, later see that the kernel is always a subgroup of G, and furthermore, the kernel is always a normal subgroup of G. Alrighty, let's uh, get away from the theory and just do some examples of homomorphisms. That'll be our, our main point for the rest of this video. Consider this map phi which goes from z mod 2z to z mod 4z, and it's defined by phi of 0 is 0, and phi of 1 is 2. So 0 is getting mapped to 0, 1 is getting mapped to 2. This is a homomorphism. It's not surjective, right? Not every element of z mod 4z gets hit. Um, and <clears throat> And um, it's, so it's not an isomorphism, right? Z mod 2z and Z mod 4z have different sizes. This map is not surjective. Um, the kernel is just zero. Zero is the only thing that gets mapped to the identity, zero, of Z mod 4z. To check that it's an homomorphism, you would need to check that for all a and b in Z mod 2z, phi of a plus b is equal to phi of a plus phi of b in z mod 4z. 
Um, that's true. Let's just check it for a and b are both 1. So phi of 1 plus 1, well, that's just phi of 0, because 1 plus 1 is 2, which is 0 mod 2. Phi maps 0 to 0, and 0 is indeed equal to 2 plus 2, because we're doing addition here, mod 4, which is phi of 1 plus phi of 1. 1's mapped into 2. And that's true for any inputs a and b, not just 1 and 1. If you look at the multiplication tables for z mod 2z, and for z mod 4z, you can see that this homomorphism sort of maps the structure of z mod 2z to, to, to be living in z mod 4z. Inside z mod 4z, there's a copy of z mod 2z, right? We have this red and green Christmas checkerboard right here, okay? Um, so this copy of z mod 2z living inside of z mod 4z, uh, you know, zero is, is is played by the actor zero, and two, sorry, one in Z mod 2Z is sort of played by two, this element two in Z mod 4Z. Okay, so that's our first example of a homomorphism. It's definitely not an isomorphism. Z mod 2Z has size two, Z mod 4Z has size four, but it preserves this, this group structure. Phi of A combined with B, is the same as phi of a combined with phi of b. More examples. We can give homomorphisms from smaller groups to bigger groups, as we just did. We can also give homomorphisms from bigger groups to smaller groups. So here's a homomorphism from z mod 4z to z mod 2z. Um, it's defined as follows. Phi of j is just equal to j mod 2. So 0 gets mapped to 0, 1 gets mapped to 1, 2 gets mapped to 2 mod 2, which is 0, and 3 gets mapped to 3 mod 2, which is 1. Uh, this is not an isomorphism. These groups have different sizes. Uh, and a different way of saying that is this is not a homomorphism because it's not injective. Um, two different elements get mapped to 0. Right? So it's not injective. Two different elements get mapped to one, showing that it's not, uh, not injective. The kernel of this map is both zero and two. So the kernel is a set containing both zero and two. You can see that because both zero and two get mapped to zero. All right, so for any inputs a and b in z mod 4z, it turns out that phi of a plus b is equal to phi of a plus phi of b in z mod 2z. Let's just check that for a couple examples. What if um, a and b were 2 and 3? Then phi of 2 plus 3, well, that's just phi of 5, but 5 mod 4 is 1, so that's phi of 1. Okay, phi maps 1 to 1 mod 2, so 1 gets mapped to 1, and 1 is 0 plus 1 which is uh, phi of two or zero plus phi of three or one. Another example, let's let a and b be two each. So phi of two plus two is phi of four, um, uh, but four mod four is zero. So this is phi of zero. Phi maps zero to zero, because zero is zero mod two. Okay, and 0 is indeed 0 plus 0, which is phi of 2 plus phi of 2. Okay. So what's going on here is that if you look at the multiplication tables, the red elements are getting mapped to the red elements. The green elements are getting mapped to the green elements. So we've somehow collapsed down some of the structure of z mod 4z. Z mod 4z in the multiplication table, we had these four checkerboards of size 2 by 2, and we've collapsed them all down onto a single checkerboard of size 2 by 2. Okay. This next example is a. Oops. Sorry, my face disappeared. Give me one moment. There we go. Um, this next example is an important one. <clears throat> so let n be any integer. We get a homomorphism phi going from z 
the group of all integers under addition, to z mod nz, and is defined by mapping j to just j mod n. Okay, so, um, yeah. So this is a homomorphism. Its kernel, or the things that get mapped to zero, are the things that are divisible by n, right? The things that are divisible by n, they are get, they're what gets mapped to zero, because when you take a mod n, you just get zero. So the kernel of this homomorphism is um, nz, all things divisible by n, negative 3n, negative 2n, negative n, 0, n, 2n, etc. Um, yeah, this is a really important example. Uh, the reason being, um, uh, so we'll prove later that kernels are always normal subgroups. So z, uh, we have this map phi, this homomorphism phi, that takes the group z to some other group. And, and the kernel of this map is nz, the integers divisible by n. And so um, uh, whenever you have a normal subgroup, you can mod out by it. So that's really where this notation z mod nz is even coming from. It's coming from this map phi. Um, I found this map phi. It uh, has a kernel. Its kernel is nz. Uh, kernels are always normal subgroups. So I can take uh, z and mod out by its kernel, this normal subgroup nz. That's where this notation z mod nz is, is even coming from. Okay, last example on this page. Consider the map from the symmetric group to the uh, integers mod 2, where even permutations get mapped to 0, makes sense, and odd permutations get mapped to 1. Um, yeah, this is a homomorphism. Its kernel is the alternating group, a n. Um, we already remarked how a n is indeed a normal subgroup of s n. This next uh, page is just a, a picture of that homomorphism in the case n equals 3. So <clears throat> in the case n equals 3, here are all my elements of s3, and I'm mapping them to 0 or 1. So this is the map from s3 to z mod 2, where the even permutations are going to 0, and the odd permutations are going to 1. So the identity permutation and these two 3 cycles, they're even, so they're going to 0. Whereas these transpositions, 1, 2, 1, 3, and 2, 3, those are odd permutations, so they're mapping to 1. OK, and the entire structure of this um, multiplication table gets mapped down here. Um, what this homomorphism ref is reflecting is really the fact that two even permutations, when you combine them, you get an even. If you can combine an even permutation with an odd one, you get an odd. If you combine two odd permutations, you get an even permutation. Just like in z mod 2z, 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, or even plus odd is odd, and 1 plus 1 is 0, or odd plus odd is even. OK, let me end with uh, three more examples or non-examples. Consider this map phi from the group of uh, symmetries of a um, regular n-gon to the integers, mod 2, defined by phi of a symmetry is 0, if that symmetry is a rotation, and phi of that symmetry is 1, if that symmetry is a reflection. So let me get my uh, hexagon really quick. Sorry. So, <clears throat> you know, the symmetries of this hexagon, this regular hexagon, are all the various rotations, but also the various flips. We have six rotations and six flips that map this regular hexagon um, to itself. So all of the rotations are being mapped to zero. All the flips are being mapped to 1. It turns out that this is a homomorphism since 
a rotation composed of the rotation is a rotation. A rotation composed of the flip is a flip. A flip composed with a rotation is a flip. And a flip composed with a flip is a rotation. Okay. So, so that structure in this group of symmetries is reflected in the uh, additive structure of z mod 2z. Non-example. So let me give you a map that's not a homomorphism. Consider this map phi from the real numbers under addition to the real numbers under addition defined by phi of x is equal to x squared. So is this a homomorphism? If so, for all a and b, we'd have to have phi of a plus b is equal to phi of a plus phi of b. So what is phi of a plus b? Well, that's a plus b squared, which is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Uh, this need not equal phi of a plus phi of b. Um, phi of a plus phi of b is a squared plus b squared. So these are not equal. a squared plus 2ab plus b squared is not equal to a squared plus b squared unless one of a or, and, or b is zero. So since these are not always equal, that shows that phi is not a homomorphism. By contrast, if we look at the same map phi, phi of x is equal to x squared, but now it's acting on the group of non-zero reals. Remember, the star means zero is excluded. So we have the group of non-zero reals under multiplication. Okay, so one's the identity now. This is a homomorphism. Why? I need to show that phi of a combined with b is the same as phi of a combined with phi of b. And that's true. Phi of a combined with b is just a multiplied by b quantity squared. Okay, when I write ab next to ab and multiply, I get ab ab. And I by now trained you, you know, to realize that ab ab is not always equal in group theory to a squared b squared. But this is a commutative group. Multiplication is commutative. Um, right? The multiplication of real numbers is commutative. A times B is the same as B times A. So this is indeed A squared times B squared. Just flop this middle B and A to get my A's next to each other and my B's next to each other, which we're allowed to do because we're in a commutative group. And then A squared B squared is indeed V of A times V of B for all possible inputs A and B, meaning A and B are non-zero reals. Okay, so this is a homomorphism. Is it an isomorphism? No, because it's not injective, so it can't be bijective. Both 1 and negative 1 map to 1, right? So 1 squared is 1, and negative 1 squared is 1. So since two different elements, 1 and negative 1, both map to the same place, that's how you see it's not injective, therefore not bijective, therefore not an isomorphism. Um, the kernel of this homomorphism is all things that get mapped to the identity. The multiplicative identity is 1. So what are the things that when you square them, you get 1, 1, and negative 1. So that's why the kernel is this set containing 1 and negative 1. All right, so uh, thanks for your attention. That's a brief introduction to homomorphisms. Uh, homomorphisms generalize isomorphisms. Uh, lots of books introduce homomorphisms before isomorphisms. Homomorphisms are very important. Our book does isomorphisms first, but now we get to play with this more general concept. All right, thanks.